What up everybody, Scuffy here and we're doing ourselves a recruit level video today. We're working on the recruit level series, getting that caught up. The recruit level series is more for newer players uh, talking about mechanics or aspects of the game that are more introductory or giving you some more fleshed out explanation as far as what abilities are, what cards are, how to play them, how to play against them. So if you're a more experienced player, this is not a video for you. However, Maybe it's a video for somebody else that you know or that is interested in getting into the game. So please, if it is something that you know that some members in your lodge or friends that are looking into Horus Heresy Legions is interested in, please share the video. Pass it along. Have them take a look at it. I uh, hope it's beneficial, especially in this regard if they're going to be playing Defenders of Caliban or they want to know about the duplicitous trait. Uh, that's really what this video is all about. We're going to be talking about duplicitous. So, with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at Duplicitous. Duplicitous is a very interesting trait. It's one of the newer ones added to the game here and is not exclusive, but relatively uh, confined to the Defenders of Caliban faction. So, it is a modified or it's a different variant of stealth. Duplicitous prevents the enemy warlord from targeting this unit until the unit attacks. Now that means targeting it both by attacking it directly or with a ability that they have that deals damage to an enemy troop. They're not able to do that. They're not able to target this troop. They can still play flanking cards. They can still play tactics from hand. They can still attack this troop with other cards that they have on the board. They just won't be able to do it with their Warlord. And that really allows for this faction to build a board up in a, in a new and unique way. Now I'm going to take Zahariel into practice to kind of show and highlight exactly what, uh, what, let's go ahead and practice against a Abaddon because he's not going to be able to do much with his ability. Normally Abaddon can pay two energy and destroy or deal three damage to an enemy troop. But because I'm going to be giving a lot of troops on the board duplicitous, he's not going to have that option. He's going to have to rely on his tactics and or troops on board. So get this little little hooded icon kind of flashing to show that they're shrouded. They're a little duplicitous. Whose side are they really on? And he can't use his ability. And as a bot, unfortunately, he's using his tactic just on the warlord. So now once this unit attacks, he will be susceptible to being targeted. You'll see that little icon go away. And then he just becomes a regular standard troop. He's no longer duplicitous. He's made his allegiance clear at that point. It's pretty simple, right? My, my opponent can use this three to attack this guy. It's a wise choice. And now that I've attacked here, he can attack with Abaddon, which is what he just did. Very simple. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that down there. He's got duplicitous. I want to get rid of that troop because otherwise that troop can still get get that guy out of there. All right, let's see here. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and try something different. Um. Oh gosh. We're just showing off at this point, but that's what we'll do. Oh, I should have done that. I should have done the terror site on that drop pod. That would be so mean. Oh, poor Dark Angle bot. Dark Angle versus Defender of Caliban. That's not at all intentional. This guy's got duplicitous, so he can't be targeted by Abaddon. Uh, the bot's not going to care about that. He's going to go straight for face, right? So let's see here. Let's let's do what I should have done last round. Get rid of that guy. Um, then we will go, let's go ahead and do this. Yeah. And now he's targetable at that point by Abaddon. Hmm. Now we'll go ahead and throw out this, heal up. See if we can stay alive long enough to make it count. Ooh, that's a big drop pod. 
Well, we might just have a way to make it work. I don't know. Duplicitous doesn't do much. I'm just talking to myself here. Uh, Duplicitous doesn't do much in terms of offensive. It allows you, though, to prep your offense, and that's really important. It's a nice little mechanic. It's not as powerful as stealth. It's not as powerful as precognition, but it has merits in its own way, and that's what's really nice about it. Um, most of the troops that have Duplicitous, there are a couple ways to give Duplicitous to a larger troop, but most of the troops that have duplicitous are lower health to begin with, and they would not last long if they were targeted by an enemy warlord. So it's nice to have those options. Unfortunately, they're very susceptible to things like frag grenade, right? They're very vulnerable in that regard. You no, know, he's got his... Well, let's see. How are we going to do this? Let's see what we've got here. Let's see what we can draw up. And then we'll go ahead and pay and pay. Gambling with the dice. But I do like it. I do like Duplicitous. It's, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, a strong feature. It's just a small support role feature. These cards are still very vulnerable to tactics. Now, in talking about how to deal with Duplicitous, how do you deal with a Duplicitous troop, especially if you're a warlord like Abaddon? Um, well, you can do a couple things. You can do a couple things here. Um, first off, I think you, what you can do is you can do exactly like he's done. Put down a lot of troop bodies, put the pressure on, and go hard into the troops that are available. You can use tactics from your hand to get rid of those troops, or you can take the small pings as they are. Uh, that really depends, it's up to you what you're looking like at your hand, are you going to be vulnerable or are you not going to be vulnerable? Um, you don't want to let duplicitous troops stay forever, especially if they have abilities because they can retain that duplicitous even when they're using the ability. So it's not a one and done. So these Jaegers are not something that you want to ignore. You want to get rid of them right away. Um, so just keep your eye on what the ability is. Is it a troop like this, Ariac Recon? He's just a three, two. He's going to die in your next turn. Is it something that you want to devote resources to? Or is it something that could be very problematic if you let sit for too long, such as the Epistolary Ethereal, drawing cards, possibly dealing damage, giving your opponent some things. This is not something that you want to let sit, so maybe you want to take that out, or the Caliban Knight. It's something to keep an eye on. What is duplicitous? Why is it a problem for you? Why would it be problematic? Do you want to deal with it right away? For instance, Master Romil isn't going to be attacking himself anytime soon, but he is going to make all of your troops plus two plus oh, all of your enemy's troops plus two, two plus two plus oh, and you want to stop that um, so as quickly as you possibly can. So he, you might put him, as far as a priority goes, over something like this, this 3-2, right? Now, one thing to note with Duplicitous is that it does not come online if the unit has frontline. Once they have frontline, again, they've made their allegiance clear. If I give Obsidian O2 uh, Duplicitous, he's still going to be a frontline troop. This is unlike what usually happens if you have a frontline troop that gains stealth or precognition, your opponent can bypass them. That's not the case here. This is not going to be a way to protect your frontline troops from your enemy warlord. In fact, that's them being a frontline is the stance that they are not duplicitous. You know exactly what they are. So 
That's it. Duplicitous is not overly complicated. It's pretty simple, but the way that you can put it to use for you in the game with your decks is uh, definitely worth checking out. I've got a Zaharial build deck I put up uh, just last week. So take a look at it. Let me know what you think. That's a good example. This game here is just a good example as far as putting duplicitous troops to use. Kind of clutching out the win there, shutting down your opponent's options and their ability to deal with those types of troops, especially especially handy against warlords such as Conrad Kurz uh, or uh, Angron. Angron's a hard match because he's he's got a high hit point. He can put out a lot of damage, but if he can't clear those troops, those troops are going to do some stuff to him, some hurt, right? It's problematic for warlords who are uh, aggressive on shutting down your, your troops, such as uh, Lehman Russ. Or even, you know, even to a degree, I would say, uh, the Blood Angels or Kabanda, uh, who are a little bit more aggressive. And then you've just got war Warlords who've got those damage dealing abilities. Nassau suffers heavily when he's facing um, duplicitous troops because he can't target them until they attack. So that really opens up a broad range. Rom as well, it opens up a broad range as far as how you can... Um, put them into use more effectively and find a way to make these troops win. So that's the whole point. All right, guys, until next time, keep playing legions and we'll talk to you later.